Hey everybody, Father Vaughn here. I'm back in Goa. You can see I'm in uh, very familiar surroundings. Now, I want to say uh, two things straight away. First, thank you for your concern. I know many of you have been writing in asking me, did I make it out in time? Well, I first must say we had an excellent pilgrimage and because of the fear of war, practically every site that we went to barring uh, the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, every single site we went to was empty and we had the place to ourselves. I continue to post on Instagram uh, and on um, uh, YouTube and Facebook uh, the little videos that I have done. Heaven knows when the Holy Land will be now available for us uh, to revisit. I hope by November we can go again. Uh, that's the first thing I want to say. Secondly, I know I've been a bit tardy with uh, putting out videos and it will continue till the end of this week because I'm going to travel again till Sunday but I'm going to do my best uh, to post as many videos as I can. Uh, I tried to put something out each day but I am not able to. I was extremely exhausted when I came back. We had a five hour stopover in Bahrain and then an eight hour stopover in Mumbai before I got back uh, to go, so I was a little tired. I want to come back to the text of, uh, of Wednesday in the third week of Easter and the text is taken from, uh, at least the first reading is taken from Acts chapter 8 verse 1 to 8. We'll continue doing uh, Acts even tomorrow, though we'll take a little, uh, we'll drop a few verses but I'll explain the importance of those verses tomorrow. But cha uh, Acts chapter 8 verses 1 to 8 is where our first reading is taken from and I want to focus on the first reading. Now I want to say straight away that you know um, passion is what must truly drive all of us you know passion doesn't need educational qualifications it doesn't need uh, us to be brilliant it doesn't need uh, you know a great motivational speech uh, I have I'm not a history student not an art student uh, not a person who studied museology I opened a fantastic museum in Bombay. I'm passionate about history. I read, um, I collected pieces and today we have one of the most beautiful uh, museums on, in, on Christian art in the Goregao Seminary. So passion is what drives me. Uh, very often people ask me, have I studied in Rome? I say, no, I'm not studied anywhere. I'm self-taught. Passion drives you to learn scripture. So passion is what we require. now. Very often I notice that Catholics are not passionate and when you are not passionate about the faith then uh, you have to be uh, motivated, come on go for Sunday Mass, come on get involved, even worse you've got to be monitored. Um, you know have you gone for Sunday Mass or else it's a sin, you know it's an obligation. We take that line of hellfire literally yeah if you don't go hell awaits you and that's the worst way to um, to promote the faith that's the worst form of evan evangelization fear now you see when you look at the early church and read chapter 8 verses 1 to 8 the text of today the early church did not have to be cajoled uh, they were captivated by the holy spirit they were captivated by the resurrection they did not need a bit of cajoling the one guys you know you need to um, you need to move on with faith now to that end we can see in today's text i make uh, referring to my notes they are willing to die for the faith so chapter 7 uh, ends with the martyrdom of saint stephen he is the first martyr after jesus christ's death the first martyr for the faith St. Stephen is taken out of um, the walls of Jerusalem. I did a recording from there. It's also called the Sheep's Gate um, or the Lion's Gate today. But uh, Christians uh, by tradition hold it to be St. Stephen's Gate because he was taken out of St. Stephen's Gate or at that time uh, one of the eight gates of Jerusalem and he was stoned there. And his last words are so familiar. It's a prayer of forgiveness, it's a prayer of surrender. The very words of Christ from the cross, literally he says, uh, into your hands I uh, commend my spirit and do not hold this sin against them. Now, our text of today opens, 
or rather in Luke, because remember, uh, St. Luke is writing the Acts of the Apostles. Luke seems to be recording verses 1 to 8 as if, you know, he had so much on his mind, so much to say, and he had to say it all at once. And look at the words he uses. They are, as it were, words that are words of extreme. So I want to put what St. Luke records in to three events, if I may say. The first event is, he uses the word, a severe persecution broke out that day in Jerusalem, he tells us, and that persecution uh, involved Saul. At that time he was Saul, he went on to become St. Paul, who approved of the stoning of uh, St. Stephen, and who is dragging people out of their homes, throwing them into dungeon. Men and women all are being thrown. So there's a tremendous persecution, a severe persecution. I don't want to downplay this persecution. It was a severe persecution that broke out. Second, verses 1 to 8 also tells us that Stephen, in all of this persecution, was buried with great lamentation, which means that there were still holy men, holy people, who risked their lives to give St. Stephen a holy burial. And we are told they don't do it silently. It is with loud lamentations. They mourn the first martyr of the early church very publicly, endangering their very own lives. And finally, we are told that Philip, who is one of the seven deacons, uh, now goes to Samaria. Remember, because of the persecution in Jerusalem, all but the apostles uh, leave Jerusalem. Only the apostles stay. And we are told among those who leave, one of them is Philip the deacon. Remember, he was one of the seven deacons. Stephen was a deacon. Uh, so Philip leaves and he goes to Samaria. And we are told that the crowds are listening eagerly. And his conversion of the people there leads the city into great joy. So on one hand, you have this tremendous sadness the other hand, there's tremendous joy. And here's uh, the point I want to make. What do you want to focus on? Because many people look at that persecution and are terrified. And God wants us to see not just the persecution. He wants us to see that very often persecution also pushes the church towards going out and evangelizing. That great line, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of Christianity, that blood falls into the ground, uh, giving life, literally, to Christianity. Christianity has grown on the blood of the martyrs. Uh, yet, I want to say this, that when you look at the church as it is today, you rarely see such kind of passion. Remember, I began with the word passion. Are we passionate about the faith? You know, in the cities of India, especially, you and I don't see that persecution. But make no mistake, rural India bears physical marks of brutality and persecution on their backs. And I want to end this teaching by uh, not just highlighting the three events uh, that take place in the Gospel, in, in Acts chapter 8, verse 1 to 8, but to, in a way, with sadness, express sometimes my disappointment with the leadership, whether it comes from bishops, whether it comes from clergy, religious, but in particular, I think the hierarchical leadership um, that does not sometimes imitate vociferously, and I don't understand their compulsions entirely, I'm not a bishop, I, I can't, but I, I think I'm reflecting the mind of a lot of people because when you look at this text, you see that the apostles stayed on. The rest, of course, had to flee for their lives, had to also go out and proclaim the good news. But the apostles stayed back and they continued to proclaim the good news with boldness. The apostles stood their ground and I think the hierarchy of the Catholic Church needs to stand its ground. Number two, the early church, when Stephen was martyred, lamented very publicly. 
I was tremendously disappointed at the silence when Father Stan Sa Swami was martyred. The lamentation came more from the laity, not from the hierarchy. And I know we might say, well, it was a time of COVID. We found many ways to deal with COVID. But I didn't, don't think the lamentation was loud for this holy man who was martyred for the faith, for standing up for his people where he came from. Even more, you know, I feel disappointed that today we are cowering down. And may I say this very clearly, the present dispensation, the ruling dispensation, gaslights the hate for the faith. But they are not the only ones. We have seen previous uh, governments who, for no reason, have introduced anti-conversion laws in states that do not or barely have uh, a Christian population. So each one looks at political convenience and uh, perpetuates their political cause or promotes their, uh, their political cause. But we also have an obligation, like the early church, when persecuted in one place, to go to the Samarias of India, where there are others who need to hear the good news. And I want to em emphasize this very strongly. You see, conversion is not our business. That is the business of God. Only God can convert your heart. Our business is evangelization. And this is the core mission of the church to evangelize, to talk about the good news. What I'm doing with many of you who are watching, many of you who are Christians, is re-evangelization. You have been brought up in the faith. I am now reiterating the faith, strengthening the faith. And you have an obligation, therefore, in the confines of your home, to spread the good news. Spread this message to others. Share the faith, share the teachings and build the community because, uh, as I said, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of Christianity. Now, this becomes a tragedy when it's not the blood, but the watered down message, you know, uh, becomes the seed of Christianity. Then obviously you're not going to see the results. And obviously, like uh, the evangelization that Philip did in Samaria, you are not going to see cities in great joy. Now, if you like these teachings, you can also go to my blog and I want to encourage you to do that. I blog potipadre.com and I put up uh, daily teachings. I did do it for a couple of uh, three weeks that I was out, but I'm back. I'm posting every day. I've also done tomorrow's teaching on the blog. So in case you like, I, I think I'm a better writer than I'm a better speaker. Uh, so go to potipadre.com and please don't forget to like this video and uh, to share it with your friends. I'm going to say bye for, for, for now. And uh, I travel again this week, but I'll be back on Sunday, short travels, um, but I will try to be as faithful as possible to these teachings. Bye everybody, and thank you once again for your constant love and support. I hope to hear from you, read your comments. I know I have to catch up with a lot of comments, but don't forget, share this video, like it, and leave your comments. Bye everybody.